Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I'm going to go over the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB exam. I'll probably split it into two videos. I'd highly recommend you have a notebook and pencil in front of you and you pause the video, do the problem before I do the problem, unpause the video and watch how I do it. I'm going to show some tips and tricks, uh, but one of the biggest ideas here is that you have 24 minutes for 25 problems, so there's not very much time. It's a no calculator exam, and you gotta be able to see kind of the trick to get through it quickly. Eliminating possible answers is a good way to go, and marking up the exam as much as possible. Um, have as many notes on the exam as you can. If you can't figure it out, you wanna skip it. Make sure you skip it on the answer sheet. And then when you go back to it, if you've marked up the exam, you don't have to start all over again. All your work will be there. You also want to circle and highlight really key ideas and look for the idea uh, that they're trying to test you on in the problem. It's basically how much mathematical knowledge you've acquired over your years. Uh, it's not as much problem solving as arithmetic reasoning. It's more, do you know that mathematical idea? So you're looking for the key in the problem to trigger what idea do, are you looking for. All right, again, go ahead and do this problem right here. Unpause the video and then watch how I do it. So number one, in the figure below, angle POS measures 90 degrees. So it's telling you POS is 90. It's even marked in the diagram. That little box means 90. What is the measure of angle ROQ? ROQ has to be this angle right here. That's always the middle um, letter for the angle. Well, if this is 90, the opposite angle has to be the same because of vertical angles. So correct answer, answer B, 90 degrees. Problem number two, you're adding three fractions together. The question is, do you know how to add fractions? Before I do anything, I'm gonna add the integers together. Four plus one plus three is eight. So I know I'm gonna have eight, and then one-fifth, two-fifths, and three-tenths. The way I add fractions together is I need a common denominator. A common denominator is going to be 10. I'm only adding my fraction, so I'm going to multiply this 1 fifth by a factor of 1, doesn't change the value, 2 over 2, plus that 2 fifths times the same thing, 2 over 2. That 3 tenths is going to stay the same. That's going to give me 2 tenths plus 4 tenths plus three tenths. I have that common denominator. I add across the top. Keep that common denominator the same. Two plus four is six. Six plus three is nine. That gives me nine over that common denominator of ten, and my answer is nine tenths. All I did was add the fractions together. I previously added the integers, the four, the one, and the three. So I have the eight and the nine tenths to give me the answer eight and nine tenths, correct answer, answer A. Okay, number three, pause the video, do the problem, unpause, watch how I do the problem. Four fifths is equivalent to which of the following? So we have decimals, a reciprocated fraction, that doesn't make any sense, we'll cross that right out, 8% or 80%. Well, it looks like it's gonna be a percent answer if I were to have to guess, and four fifths is pretty close to you know, a full unit, so I, if I had a guess, I'd go right to 80%. The other way to do it is to do four-fifths, that's a fraction, four-fifths, it's like it falls over. Five goes into four, well, it doesn't go into it, so it'd have to go into 40, so I put a decimal there, bring that decimal up. How many times does five go into 40? It goes in there eight times, that's 0.8. Um, 0.8 as a percent, I would bring it over 1, 2 to give me 80%. So correct answer, answer D right there. Number four, what is the decimal equivalent of one-third rounded to the nearest hundredths place? So this is going to be similar. I'm going to go three into one. It doesn't go into one, so i got to put a decimal there. 3 and then 10, it goes in there three times. That's going to give me 9. I could probably stop right there. I could keep going. There's only one solution here that has a 0.3 in it. 
so it has to be answer B. Or if I want to keep going, 10 minus 9 is 1, bring down the 0. 3 into 10, 3 times. And I want to do the hundreds place. This is the tenths place. This is the hundreds place. Um, correct answer, B. Number 5, similar to the one up above, I'm going to do the integers first. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 minus 2 is 5. Then I'm going to look over here for a common denominator. What is 3, 5, and 15 going to go into? It's going to be 15. I have to multiply this by 5 over 5. So 1 third is the same thing as 5 fifteenths. 2 fifths, I'm going to have to multiply this by 3 over 3 to get it to 15, plus 6 fifteenths minus 14 fifteenths. So then I have 5 fifteenths plus 6 fifteenths out across the top. 5 plus 6 is 11. 11 minus 14 is going to be negative 3 fifteenths. So I got a 5 and a negative 3 fifteenths. So I have to subtract that 3 fifteenths from that 5. Right, so I know it's going to be less than 5 or 4 something. I look at my answers, there's only one answer that's in the 4s, so it's going to be answer A. But if I needed to figure that out, what I'm saying is 5 is the same as 4 and 15 fifteenths. I would do 15 minus 3 to get 12 fifteenths, and it would be 4 and 12 fifteenths. Correct answer, answer A. Problem number six, what is another name for 20,706? So I don't really understand that question, but I looked down at the answers and now I kind of understand it. They're asking me, do I know my place value? So this is my 10,000th place. So this is going to be 20,706. So I'm looking for answers that say 20,706. So as I read that number out loud, I could find my answer is the 20,000, the 706, correct answer, answer D. Uh, I'm not really explaining all these problems perfectly or teaching you for the first time. I'm just trying to review them so those ideas come back uh, and hopefully kind of trigger some memories and bring them back to you. Okay, number seven, what are the missing integers on this number line? Here's my zero. I'm going to the left, so that would be going negative. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. There's only one right here with a negative 4 in it, so it has to be answer A. Or 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be the negative 4 and the 1. Correct answer, answer A. Problem number 8. Uh, again, pause the video, try and do the problem, unpause and watch how I do it. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. It's a practical math channel, uh, making you work smarter, not harder, on standardized math exams. Okay, which of the following is divisible by 3, 7, and 8? So I want to know what number up here, the smallest number up here, that all of these will go into. I'm actually going to go through a process of elimination since they go in ascending order. 21 divisible by 3, yes, by 7, yes, by 8, no. 24 is divisible by 3, by 7, no. 7 times 3 is 21, it's not going to go in there. 56, uh, 56 divisible by 3, no, right, 30, 60, that's not going to work. 168, well, that's my only option left, it's got to be one. 68, correct answer, 168. Um, if we explain it a little bit more, one way to check if it's divisible by 3, if you add up all three digits or all the digits in the number, if that number is divisible by 3, then the number is divisible by 3. So 1 plus 6 is 7. 7 and 8 is 15. 15 is divisible by 3, so 168 is divisible by 3. But I don't have to check all three of those numbers and do the long division because I eliminated all other possible answers. Number nine, what is another way to write four times four times four? 
They're checking, do you know the idea of powers? So four times itself is four squared, times itself again is four to the third. Correct answer, answer C. Uh, this one doesn't make any sense, right? This is saying four plus four plus four would be three times four. That, that's the exact same thing as there. Doesn't make sense. And three to the fourth, well, there's three of them, so that's where that three comes from right there. Number 10, which of these is equivalent to 35 degrees Celsius? And they tell you what the equation is. So they're asking you to take that 35 and plug it in here. Right? It's saying Celsius 35 degrees, how much is that in Fahrenheit? I could kind of take a guess. I know it's not going to be these really cold temps, you know, if you've worked a little bit with metric, but it could be either one of those. Um, so I'm going to have to figure it out. So I'm going to take that 35 and plug it in there. Nine fifths times that 35 plus 32. So then five goes into 35 seven times. So those will cancel. Five in here once, in here seven times. Nine times seven, 63. And then I have 63 plus 32, which can give me five and a nine. 95 degrees, answer B right there. All right, number 11, I think I'm just gonna do three more, break it into two videos, and then I'll do the other rest of the problems in the second video following the next week. Okay, number 11, what is the volume of a pyramid that has a rectangular base, so it's got a rectangular base, five feet by three feet, and the height of eight, so it's kind of hard to see, but it looks kind of like that. But you don't really have to know what it is because they give you the equation. What is the volume? Well, volume's right there. So volume is going to be equal to one third length times W width times H height. And even though those are integers, they could also be fractions. So I'm multiplying all those numbers together. I'm going to see if I can cancel anything. 3 and 3 will cancel, leaving me with nothing in the numerator but the 5 and the 8. 5 times 8 is 40, and only a 1 in the denominator. Correct answer, answer C, is cubic feet at the end because I have feet times feet times feet, and that's where my units come from. Okay, number 12. This is a little tricky if you're not good with inches and feet and yards, but the trick here is you know that there are three feet to the yard, but I gotta do two conversions. So I need how many inches are there in three and one third yards? Well, there are three feet to the yard, right? So three feet to the yard. So three yards is nine feet. A third of a yard is a third of three, which is one, right? So I got a total of 10 feet. So now I got 10 feet, and I want to know how many inches are in 10 feet. 12 inches to the foot. 12 times 10 gives me the 120 inches. A couple other ways to do that, but the trick here is that you're doing two conversions. First, you got to go yards to feet to get to 10 feet, and then the 10 feet to the inches. All right, last problem for this video. What is 13 divided by 4? There's been a few of these. So it's like a fraction like this, 13 over 4. I think of it falling down this way. So how many times does 4 go into 13? Well, 4 goes into 13 three times to give you 12. 13 minus 12 is 1. There's no number here, so I'm going to put 0. Bring that down. That decimal is going to go up here. 4 goes into 10 twice. So then I could probably stop right now, or are there are two answers here. No, there's only one with three point twos. So it's got to be answer D. If I want to continue, um, four went into 10 twice, give me eight. Two, bring down the zero. Four goes into 25 times to give me 3.25. So you got to kind of look for the trick so that you could go fast enough, but you don't want to go so fast you make a careless mistake. So I sure hope this helped. Uh, stay tuned. Next week, I'll finish off this test, 
And uh, if you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments. And uh, if you like the video and it was helpful, please hit like and subscribe. Share it with anybody else you might know who's studying for an ASVAB military entrance exam. Thank you.